Ghost Unchained is literally a game for everyone. There's a lot of easy decks, there's a lot of difficult decks, and then there is that deck that literally separates the casual player from the pro players. I'm talking about the deck where if you look at the top player win rate is so much higher than the average player one, because the pro player knows how to pilot the deck at the best. But have you ever asked yourself, what is the hardest deck to play in Ghost Unchained? Well, that is Mayday, and I'm not saying this randomly. I'm saying it because it's the deck with the biggest difference in win rate from the pros to the average player, and there is only one player that is known from everyone that really mastered this deck and achieved multiple top 10 with it. And today, with his help, I will explain to you how to play this deck and how to dominate the ladder with it. But why is this deck so hard? Well, because this deck has a lot of different way for play it versus each different matchup and you have even a lot of different lines. So every turn you will have to make multiple decisions and that's where the real skill of this deck is. But if it seems too hard, don't worry. I will teach you how to play it with the help of the best made player, Xico Perico. In this video we will even analyze his games and all the different combo that he does. But before that, let's jump right into the list to see how to play the hardest deck at the best. Okay guys, this is a deck I would literally start us up from the win rate, as you can see 50% out of almost 2000 games, while Xico has 73% win rate. And trust me, this is not even his best, this is a new version. He had like 80% on his old version on like hundreds of games. So this guy is really crazy with this deck. But now let's go check literally the list, like how do you play this deck? So I would love to go through each different card, but it's pretty impossible because literally every card has a different effect and every card is pretty important, so it would be like 3 hour video. The only thing that I really have to say is that every card has like a roar effect. The point of this deck is literally to play your roar card and jump all your creature back and get multiple roar and so on. So it's like not a tempo, it's not just a value, it's like is almost everything, like it's really adaptive this deck and that's why it's so skilled and so good. And a lot of different cards are really good for each different matchup, like for example Friendly Mimic is really good versus Control because you can get another Mayday, when instead for example Blade Borrower or Lethargy Mage are really good versus Aggro, instead versus Control are pretty bad. So you have even even to continue to play this deck for understand what is good versus what, but for help you, me and Xiko put together all the most important combos. So let's start from the first First really 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 main card and that card is Desert Mercenary because this card is probably actually even more important than made in this deck like I truly believe that without this card you can't play this deck because it's a 3-3 so normal stats and you lower to 1 every guild in your deck and guys if you don't know this deck is just made from guild and this card combos super well because the fact that you put every creature at 1 is super broken because even when you jump that creature back, that creature stay at 1 mana, so it's really super important this card. This is the first card you want in your mulligan versus every matchup literally, like versus control, but even more versus aggro, because it's really a power play to play this with the pip like a 2 mana, and then the turn after you can play 3, 3 mana that now are 1 mana creature. So this card is really, really important. Another really main combo is Toast to Peace plus Spy Master. This is super important in ladder, because the ladder is full of aggro, and this combo literally beat every aggro, because if you have that, like they are at like 4 mana with 3, 4 creatures on the board, you can jump all their creature back and play for free one or even two spy master and then you have two six six versus an aggro that has no board like that is game literally and that's actually how you win versus most of the aggro. The same can be told of Marcella. Marcella is really an important card for maintain the board because you get the deadly and you can even jump Marcella back for get other two deadly and so on and you can even combo with first mate that is a one mana that gives blitz to your skulkers and even play other two and that is really broken because in combo with Marcella you can get two deadly with blitz and that's super good because even versus control you can clear like really really big creatures with just those two cards. And then we obviously have the main piece of this deck that is Mayday. To be honest, for play at the best this deck, you have to understand when to search and when to play Mayday and when not. Generally, you don't play Mayday when you are behind because it takes a bit of time to set up Mayday or even versus aggro is a lot harder to utilize Mayday. Well, instead versus control, generally you have all the time that you want and you want to find your Mayday as soon as possible. You can even combo Mayday with like friendly mimic that is really, really good 
good for make huge damage in just one tour. And then the last card I want to analyze is Benefactor. That is actually an addition of the last generation of the deck of Xico. He was not playing this one before and then I think there was the last patch that buffed this card and now he's actually pretty good because every time you play a guild you make it 3 damage and you even leech because this card has leech so it's really really good if you can set up it probably is like a middle thing from Mayday because like for example versus control is a bit worse than Mayday because Mayday is a bit easier to like get multiple multiple damage but it's a bit better versus aggro because it's a 3-6 with leech and if you play this creature down in the board the aggro has to kill it because if they don't kill it literally the turn after you make a lot of damage and heal a lot so it's really really good in my opinion versus aggro when he said versus control is a bit worse than Mayday but it's still like a solid body that make a really really good effect if they don't clear it and now guys these were all the main piece of combo obviously as i said this deck literally should have like a three hour explanation for see all the different combos but those are the main one i would suggest you to try this deck because trust me it's super super funny and is literally the best deck in the game if played really correctly and now let's go check how to play this deck correctly seeing some xico perico games okay guys so i watched the xico perico file and he sent me four gigabyte of matchup with all the different matchup and multiple game versus each different type of deck obviously i can't analyze like 20 games in this video but i will put that in the description like a zip file so if you are really interested in to get good with this deck you can download the file and watch all those games from the point of view of the best midday player for really learn at the best this deck and now let's jump right into two games for see if i would play essentially like C. okay guys we are in our first game we are versus mage seems like uh, probably uh, a random mage because it's the best deck Okay, we are versus alien, we mulligan away um, Mimic and this is what I said, like, you don't really want Mimic at the start because he's really slow as a card and you don't even have Mayday already, so. Trial Begins is really good for find Mayday and as you can see guys, as you can see, I, I didn't saw this game before making my video, but as you see, he kept the 3 mana that lowered every guild at 1 because it's literally the main card of this deck. So he kept that and even he kept the card for search for Mayday because I mean, if they are card draw mage, they are not super fast, so you can take your time for find mage. So we say hi, we say hi, nice, nice. Okay, they go with Demetrius. I think we just flip next door. Uh, I would flip uh, probably there. Uh, Lethargy mage and mimic. Pass. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, because yeah, now you have to flip before the cards. I totally forgot about that. But I, I probably would have still flipped away Lethargy Mage and Friendly Mimic because it seems like two really not super essential cards. I mean, Mimic starts to get a bit good because I mean you will have a one mana, um, one mana Mayday essentially. We are going, I think, for Mayday pretty surely, yeah. Because we have even the Desert Mercenary in, in our end, so we can put this Mayday out one mana. That is probably the main point for do your combo essentially. Okay, alien ramp, and it's pretty scary because when Cardro Magic ramp like that and you are not putting pressure, you gotta, you gotta speed up. Okay, now this play for sure helped, even in Illusionist was a really good top deck because you can, it's one of the few cards that put pressure, we can say, at least in the future of this deck. And lowered that to one mana and Mayday was really good. Okay, so I think alien is like a four mana, four damage, Demetrius spell or something around like that. But yeah, I, I don't really think they can just kill us with the damage before we kill them with our combo, if not with a random. Okay, they're really ramping guard. That's pretty scary. Uh, that's that's probably a good. Uh, so I would probably let her mage mage there. Oh, you go with that, yeah, and then let her mage mage, obviously, yeah. So you have even a card more, even if you are not interested in hunting trap, probably in this situation you have one card more to flip. Yeah, so you can flip hunting trap and goblin, yeah, I totally agree with this play. Oh, and now we got the combo with Lady Marcella. Lady Marcella and first mate, really good combo. It can be really good if they don't OTK us with Arandium, because we can kill Arandium with that, but... I don't think they don't OTK us, so yeah, probably this matchup is not the best. So essentially what we are searching right now, we are searching for, uh, I think, card that make us jump 
uh, melee, so we can start to get uh, going a bunch of melee, like start to proc the effect, so we can get bigger and bigger melee, and then OTK them with melee and mimic. At least, that's what I think he's searching for. So even, even the one mana draw is pretty good to utilize, because now he's mana surged, so you draw two cards. I think we are in a winning position right now. It's not, like, super easy to win in this situation. Okay, now we got the first ship. We could even toss to peace. I mean, we could actually even toss to peace and play the six mana, but it's so bad because you even give back Blade, Demetrius, and even the ramp. Like, there is no way you do that. I totally agree with this play, with Blade. I, to be honest, don't think you trade user. Yeah, you totally just go face. Because, like, those are damage that will for sure help your future combo, essentially, with Mayday. Because Mayday is a damage, like, it's not OTK, literally, it's, like, continuous damage. So, one, two attack can really, like, make you easier to get uh, the kill. Okay, we're actually pretty near to to Aradion because they still have even the, the peep, so... Okay, Leirod, they clear the board, take a bunch of tempo, but... I don't know, they are going pretty slow. I, they're going pretty slow, like, it's not a lot of pressure, and... Uh, like, we, we still have Mayday and the Mimic in our end. We just really need, like, some jumper, essentially. Doing that, I don't understand why, to be honest, because, like, that's, that's giving us favor, and, like, it does, doesn't actually do nothing to, for them, so... So, now, what you want to do... Uh, to be honest, I would flip for some... some... jump scenario, like... You really s start to want uh, some jump card, and you have a lot in your deck. And, like, card you have already are not really helpful. But they go for that... Oh, they go for a toss piece, okay, makes sense. I don't even know how... I don't know. Oh, yeah, because... Oh, 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 I'm so bad guys at the game. Okay, see. See, that, that's why I did that. That's why I did that, and that's why he's a lot better melee player than me, and that's why I'm not making this video for you, but I'm asking the best melee player for do that. I mean, probably that was not even a best melee player play. Like, it was a good play, and I didn't saw it, but it was not crazy. But at the same time, you can be sure that he's playing good. Uh, so that was for sure the correct play. We put a 12-12 stats on board, removed everything, and even procured one Mayday, so... And that's why you want Mayday 1 mana, it's so important for every jump, for every play, that it is 1 mana, like, it's, it's really the main card, the des Desert Mercenary. Okay, now we go for the combo, I think, with Lady Marcella and uh, the 1 mana, makes sense, and that's pretty good, because you push 12 damage phase with that combo right now, so... You don't get that... 2-1, but it's really not important right now. And those damage are really important because we are really near to Aranion, and next turn they can use 9 mana for proc Aranion, but if they does that, I think we have little, because we can play... We can play triple Mayday next tour. Yeah, that was for sure a flip. Okay, yeah, 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 now we can play... Yeah, yeah, now we can play, sorry, triple Mayday, so... 3 damage plus 4 is 7, plus 5 is 12. They can, they have to leech and clear all the board for not to die next turn. And that was really well played by Xico, because if it didn't optimize all the damage in that way, they would have lost probably if they have a random, because they would have not have little this turn, and then um, and then next turn Alien would have opticated if he has a random, obviously. Instead of playing like he did, Okay, there is even a board space thing that the zero one actually block mimic play. So yeah, they can just play two time melee with melee during escape and melee. At the same time, if they don't kill all the other creatures, they die just on board. So they have to kill creatures. So, so. or creatures or board space. Like in some way, I think we will have little next one. But let's see. Okay, Alien is dropping. Yeah, that that Pyramid is worth them. We will not do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's 700 way for little for Psycho with just made it. Literally, not even attacking on board, he has little. Let's see which little he wants to do. Oh, he wants he wants to do the made little because he, he knew he knew that that was for the video. So he, wa he wants flex. Makes sense, makes sense. <laughs> okay, yeah. So he will jump this back for put at zero mana and then um, replay it and then mimic on it and then. And then that, that's not finished. Actually, yeah, 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 they have literally even perfect word space. He even take the the longer 
the BM there's alien but yeah really really well played by Xico uh, I think like <laughs> I think actually even this game was probably not won by a lot of other melee players and that's why you have like 20-30% tiger with it okay guys now I will analyze a game versus agro war because I wanted to change the thing okay we send away Catrod makes sense toss to piece is really good versus agro so you keep it and uh, looter I think he keep that because he's probably the only two mana that he can play so it makes sense even that I don't know, like, I probably would have a slammed even the, the one for 2 one, one there. So, already a different thing it does by me, and probably he think it was correct, so, makes sense. Okay, yeah, see, that, that's why you keep Encumbered Looter, is the only card that you can probably play right now, and, uh, and it takes even a value trade, you draw a card, it's really, really good versus aggro. But yeah guys, so I'm trying to analyze a, an agro warp game now, so I analyzed the control before, so in this way you can just see a bunch of things different, but if you're really interested into this deck, you have to check for sure the file that Xico sent me, because guys, that, that is ama an amazing effort by him and I really appreciate it. Okay, so we for sure take before the trade because you want to draw. Oh, actually, actually, see guys, how he play better than me. He played that before because that put card in your deck, uh, the, the ships. And so yeah, he raised the chance to draw a ship right now. And draw a ship right now would have been so good versus an aggro because it's a 3-4 on board. And I mean, probably would have already be a winning game. I'm not, I'm not joking. Like having a 2-2 plus a 3-4 already versus an aggro would have been almost a win in my opinion. Okay. We are not in a super situation in my opinion right now, uh, but now we draw the ship. And the guys, if he didn't did that, probably that ship would have be one card lower, essentially, because it would have get played after, so that was a big play. Double daring escape, mm, that was good. Oh, oh, I see now why he flipped. So I think he flipped, I think he flipped literally for search for uh, Sartorian Spymaster because he had the toast. He was pretty lucky even to find that, but that was like a good play because it was not obvious to, to search for that. And yeah, it worked. So that was, that is a super power play, like toss to piece plus a Sartorian Spy Master, as they said in the introduction, is literally a top notch versus aggro. You always want to find that versus aggro if you can. Even now, because now, like, war has not even any more Slayer, so if you literally remove their board, they literally do nothing, so. Oh, and that is so smart as well, guys. That is so smart as well. He played that before, so he lowered even more the card, so he can... Oh, oh okay, okay. Okay, guys, I, I'm, I'm learning a lot. Like, I never did this play, and it's actually really smart, because just that guy reduced of 6 mana the 6-6, six, six, because there are 3 creatures. Without that play, he could have not... He could have not... Uh, uh, played the 6-6 the, the six, six. and most importantly now he has even double gear, double um, rogue skulker that he can get blitz with with that still that card so that, that's like a, an amazing play like he has four two one blitzer for like three mana like that's crazy just have to, obviously to get that mana surge before but so this turn is literally essentially just get that mana surged in some way. Oh, that is... A, I think I go for uh, Blade Borrower there, yeah. yeah. Blade Borrower is amazing versus versus aggro war. Versus every aggro, that card is really, really good for maintaining the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're in a really good spot. They have still four cards, but like, as I say, the, the Rogue Skulker power play is really a power play versus this type of deck. Like, you get four... 2-1 with Blitz for 3 mana, like, that's crazy. Okay, this is a really, really good play even for uh, Han and New Game. Yeah, really, really good for them. At the same time... Oh, and and you can even combo the the Rogue play with, uh, with the 2 mana that get you Stone Skin Poison and all those things. Or even with the draw, actually. Goes with toss. Oh yeah, because we have even another six mana. It makes sense. It totally makes sense because, like, you reset the board, you keep all your blitzer, and then you go with the six mana. You draw. Like this play totally makes sense. But guys, see how amazing is this combo versus aggro? Like, it's literally no sense. As I said, that's how you win versus aggro. And 
he's actually showing at that off, so makes sense. But yeah, that was for sure the correct play because he got more value, he jumped everything back, and now he still has his blitzer, and now he has even a 6-6 six -six right now. And I mean, the opponent is a, is a 15, and uh, essentially at a 9, because we can even go face, and we have even made it in our end. So right now it's not just uh, we don't have to die, but right now we are even killing them, essentially. Let's see what they does. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Uh, probably that's a turn where you go with the Blitzer. I, I would go with the Blitzer there. Just face with the 6 5. Yeah, you, you cut it before, obviously. And then um, go with the other three cards. Oh, he's seeing. He, essentially, I think he's checking if he had uh, a Soul Survivor because the three guys would have get a bit punished. You can even, yeah, just go with, uh, with that one. I would have probably played before the, those, yeah, and he probably, he probably w went over those for, yeah, like this was a little misplay by him, because if, if oh no, actually, mm. no, 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 that, that was actually played better than me, because now yeah, he would have had one less, he would have essentially had one two one instead of two one one, and it's better to have two one one versus uh, agro war. Oh, it's really bad because those are six damage. I mean, actually, Xeco's checked with Cutthroat that they had not lethal, so it totally makes sense how we played. Yeah, and this, uh, as you can see, now they are playing even defensive because they have nine health. Like, they are dying essentially, and we have melee, so. Yeah. Now, actually, you can even like do melee mimic. I probably. There, I think I do made a mimic there. Oh, that is that's actually even better. Uh, I don't know there though, because made a mimic. You clear the board. You play made a mimic and have another made a. But yeah, probably makes sense because yeah, actually it's, it's just better. Like how he does play is just better than me with this deck. So I can probably shut up and just watch with you guys. Yeah, yeah, that, that play was a lot better. He just cleared everything, put a bigger board than mine, and yeah, he totally played better. So guys, remember, if you want to check all his games that are really a lot, are like 20 games on how to play versus the different matchup, because as I said, this deck is super matchup dependent how you want to play, go check that file because I can't analyze every, every game because it would be like a three hour video, but if you want to really get good at this deck, you should, to be honest. Okay guys, those were the game. I really hope you enjoyed those. A lot of people asked me to bring this deck and they wanted to do that in a really, really good way. And that's why I contacted Skiko for bringing to you the best video possible. So I want to thank him for helping me out. And remember guys, if you like all those quality content, please drop a follow, a like or a comment if you want to see like other deck in the same way. Like I can always contact the best player with that deck and we try to make a video together for bringing the best information to you. And now this was all about this video. I would suggest to you to go check this video and I guess see you to the next one.